Piep, piep, piep. Ne. What? Nani? I'm woken the next day by the shrill beeping of my alarm clock. It's tinny? Is that supposed to say tiny? It's tiny. Tinny? It's tinny ringing, pierces my skull like a skewer, and I wince. God, would it kill you to be quiet for like five seconds? <laughs> Gee, it's kind of needy over here. My alarm clock feels... My alarm clock, of course, doesn't listen to me. It's an inorganic object that can't think or feel. Sometimes I wish I was an inorganic object, too. Then I wouldn't have to suffer from so many debilitating headaches. I must have had too much to drink yesterday. What happened again? You don't need to recap this every time you go to sleep, Hiroki. The events of last night returned to my befuddled mind in drips and dabs, but... Beep, beep, beep. My alarm clock's still drilling away, as insistent as ever, ever. It's so loud it's starting to set my teeth on edge. I guess I can't ignore it any longer. Not if I want to cling to what remains of my sanity. Alright, alright, I'm coming. Shut up already. I haul myself from my futon and seize my clock. As I have every, as I have every day for the last three years. I turn it off, cutting short its incessant clangor, then sigh in relief. <laughs> I'm trying this new thing where I'm, I'm wearing headphones so that I can actually hear the game. Which like seems obvious to do that, but I just like my headphone jack was broken so I didn't feel like fixing it. And oh my god that music gets distracting. I haul myself from my futon and seize my clock, as I have every day for the last three years. I turn it off, cutting short its insistent clangor, then sigh in relief. Finally, peace and quiet. Now I can think about last night a little more clearly. Work got out late, I remember that much. Then as I meandered to the train station, I was stuck with a sudden desire to ha have a stiff drink. And what's more, the sudden desire to see Marina. I traveled across Tokyo to that classy bar <laughs> with all the businessmen. <laughs> classy. That classy bar where I first met Marina. I hadn't seriously expected to see her again, but Lady Luck must have been on my side because there she was. We talked for a little and drank rather, mo rather more than a little. Then she invited me back to her office. We spent a long time together and then... <laughs> Though my cl alarm clock's been silenced, my forehead still throbs. I press a hand to my temple, my teeth worrying my lower lip. Images flash through my mind, all of them equally improbable. Horns, wings, a tail. Marina isn't a human, she's a succubus. She sustains herself through the strength of human a ad adoration, and her physical stamina is far greater than any average of woman's. Marina not o Marina's not only the succubus. No, sorry, Marina is not the only succubus in Tokyo either. Ikue Ayu, the famous idol, is another one of her younger sisters, and so is that strange girl I met on the train. Cosmos, I think Marina said her name was. Now Marina's taken a special interest in me. Succubi all over Japan will flock to me. Marina warned me as as much before she asked Marina warned me as much before she asked her chauffeur to take me home. My sisters will all start coming after you, just desperate to claim your heart. His heart, okay. I hope that you have enough stamina to handle all of us. Oh boy. Did that really happen? It sounds patently unbelievable. But the longer I lie here, the sharper the memories become. Marina. Marina cha. Really is a succubus. She transformed before my very eyes. I might have been drunk last night, but I wasn't so trashed I didn't invent a, a ridiculous scene like that whole cloth. My imagination is not that good. 
That's why I wanted to become a photojournalist rather than a writer. I'm a skeptic, and I can only believe in things if I've seen them with my own eyes. I'm bad at playing pretend. You're also an idiot. A few days prior, I would have scoffed at the mere idea of succubi. Brumarina's inhuman features have swept my doubts aside. <laughs> inhuman features? How can I explain her wings and her horns without the aid of supernatural? Wakatsuki Marina sure is incredible, in more ways than one. I roll over in my futon, sighing. Since it's a Tuesday, I need to get up, freshen up, and get to work. But my daily grind seems much less pressing than per usual. My mind's almost entirely ensconced with Wakatsuki Marina and her succubi sisters. What's going to happen to me now? I guess as of today, my normal life has well and truly ended. They really want to spell it out for you. <laughs> Despite my ominous port portents, however, the day unfolds more or less the same as it always does. I get dressed, eat a hasty breakfast, shove on my shoes, and head off for work. I catch the 7.30 train as per usual and relax as the door slides shut with a hiss. My hour commute to work passes uneventfully. An hour? Oh my god. That sucks. Though I keep my eyes peeled, glancing this way and that through the crowds, I, s I see hide nor hair of the elusive cosmos. I, r I arrive at work a little after 8.30, that's really disappointing actually when I see cosmos, and greet my fellow employees. Then I set to work on the numerous tasks my boss set me the day prior. Work finishes at 1700 on the dot. <coughs> Much to my relief, I worked overtime so much. Oh, I've worked overtime so much. I can't remember the last time I left the office while the sun was still up. Maybe some benevolent god heard my plaintive, plaintive prayers the day prior and decided to throw me a bone. I walked to the train station in high spirits and board a train back home. The afternoon train headed for Tokyo suburb is almost as busy as the morning train headed right into its heart. I'm hemmed in, as always, by business men and women of various ages, with a few high school kids thrown in for good measure. The businessmen keep their gazes cold and unapproachable, their narrowed eyes fixed upon the scenery as it flies past the windows. The high school students, meanwhile, are busy chattering amongst themselves, tapping out text messages and giggling at funny jokes. Funny jokes. The young kids must have had busy days themselves, full of rote learning and club activities, but they're bursting with energy. Yeah, dude, they get to go home to this dank quarantine. I can't help but envy them. I wish I was young, too. How old are you, dude? You behave like a 13-year-old. You might not think it to look at me now, but I was pretty popular back in high school. I would not have guessed. I've always been tall for my age, so I played on the school's basketball team. That netted me quite a lot of respect among my classmates. In my last year of high school, I managed to snag myself a girlfriend. She wasn't the prettiest or the smartest girl in class, but I liked her a lot. She was ugly. <laughs> Eric is a douche, man. Even now, I can remember her serious face and her long, dark hair. I broke things off with her when we graduated from high school and went to university. It was a mutual agreement. We were too young and immature to commit to a long distance relationship. You still are. I don't know if I miss her per se, but I often think back to the time we spent together. She wasn't a cheerful, giggly girl like the high school students on this train. She was unusually quiet and withdrawn, but I think that's what drew me to her in the first place. She wasn't drop-dead gorgeous, but she was pretty. Her charms were understated, very traditionally Japanese. She had delicate features, pale skin, and a snub nose. Snub. Snub nose. She always needled me to take my study seriously. In that sense, she was rather motherly. Dude, this, this Hiroki has some mommy issues, for sure. She tried to make me lunch too, but her cooking skills were subpar. 
She was ugly and a bad cook. <laughs> but I liked her though. But that might be putting it nicely. Her hamburger steak was tougher than old boots. <laughs> Ew. Her rolled egg omelette split down the middle and her ginger chicken was far too salty. I tried my best to eat her food, but I'd always end up huddled in the boys' restroom gagging. That made her scowl. <laughs> Sorry you're trying to poison me. I don't know what you want from me. She scowled when I looked at other girls too. Her jealous fits would, were so cute they always made me laugh. Which of course upset her all the more. Yeah, great. Smooth move, Hiroki. I can still remember all the things we did together. It's been over a decade since we last spoke. Really? Oh my gosh, she is old. We studied together in the school library. She gave me chocolate on Valentine's Day and sometimes we went to cafes and themes parks together. Dude, this was 10 years ago, you gotta get over it. When was the last time I've been to a cafe with a cute girl? Oh, not that cute though, like a little cute. <laughs> Feels like it's been forever. My life's been nothing but work for the last few years. I haven't had a chance to cut loose and have fun. Being an adult really does suck. I feel you there, dude. I'd be nice if it would be nice if I could go on a date again. Like I did before. Not like that'll happen. It's highly unlikely a cute, perfectly molded girlfriend will fall from the sky into my lap. Dude, just pick one that sucked you by. So picky. I guess you could say Marina fits the bill, but she's not really girlfriend material. She's too mature for such a juvenile label. She's more like a partner. Though I think she- sorry, I'm just trying to process this. This guy's so dense. Though I thought- I think she'd prefer being called mistress. I like Marina well enough. There's something a little intimidating about her. She's not at all like my first girlfriend. Then again, nobody is. It's impossible to replace a memory. I'm being stupid. Yes, you are. As per usual. I should give up on dating. I'm not a teenager anymore. What? <laughs> You're just gonna give up? <laughs> what? But why? You don't look that old to me, and I think you're very handsome. Ha, that's nice to know, mysterious voice, but I... Wait, nani? I can feel something. No, two somethings pressing against my chest. A familiar scent of floral perfume wafts about me, and I feel fingers grip my, the sleeves of my shirt. Somebody's pressing her body against me, but who? I look down, bemused by the audacity of this mysterious person. <gasps> Go away! It might be <laughs> and my befuddlement soon morphs into a full-blown disbelief. <laughs> it literally doesn't matter what I pick, I don't think, but... Baka! <laughs> Pervert! I said, you're the pervert from yesterday. Pervert? Maybe I am, yeah. But that isn't very nice. You shouldn't shout such things in public. Bro, your titties are literally like on my... On my torso. I'm bad with people, and I even and even I know that much. Ahaha! <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was so surprised it just slipped out. No, I contemplated that for like a good five seconds. Fancy seeing you here. I recognize this girl, or to be more precise, I recognize her body. God, yo, Hiroki's the real pervert here. I never got to see her face during our last encounter. The curve of her spine was pressed against my chest, her derriere resting snugly against me. I'm quite intimidated. Oh, I'm quite intimately acquainted with that behind of hers, but her face was something of a mystery. Now I can finally see what she really looks like. Oh, now that I. Now that I can finally see what she really looks like, I can say with certainty that she's just as adorable as I anticipated. She is quite adorable, I'll, I'll give her that. The soccer games have really good art. Her eyes are a soft amber hue, lined with long luxuri luxurious lashes. Her nose is a small cute button, and her lips are faintly shiny with gloss. 
Her hair is lilac but fades into an icy blue about the tips. It's gotten a rough kind of bob and part of it is tied back in a stubby ponytail. Atop her head is a atop her head is perched a pair of cat ears. They don't look very practical. I'm not sure what purpose they serve really beyond an aesthetic one. Then again, a lot of women wear high heels, Marina included, and I'm not sure what pr practical purpose they serve either. Can't they damage women's feet? I <laughs> maybe I I don't <laughs> what? Plus those sharp spikes can get stuck in gutters. What kind of heels are you thinking of, man? Freaking dagger heels. This girl's choice of headgear might be impractical, but she's wearing a sturdy pair of sneakers on her feet. The pink jacket and those very, very short shorts serve to complete the look. I think she might be younger than I am. Yeah, she looks about 18. But only by a handful of years. Hiroki, you're at least you're at least 28, dude. She's most likely in her early 20s. Oh yeah, he said that. Okay. Though she really is a succubus, her her age might not scale like that of normal humans. For all I know, she could be centuries old. Ew. Would a 500-year-old wear a pair of cat ears, though? The jury's still out on that one. Your name's Cosmos, right? Right. Cosmos affirms this with a lethargic nod of her head. There's something a little off about this girl, actually. And no, I'm not just referring to the cat ears. Her movements all seem a second or so delayed. And then there's the fact that she's pushing herself against me in the middle of a crowded train. Doesn't this girl understand the con concept of personal space? How do you know my name? Marina told me. She explained who you are yesterday. You're a succubus, right? That's right. Cosmos nods once more, her stubby ponytail bouncing. It's not the only part of her anatomy that bounces either, but I try not to stare too blatantly. You're a liar, you're, you're staring. And they put the words right over. So you, so you know everything, Marina told you? Yeah, she did. Oh, good. Cosmo smiles. That makes this easier. I don't like explaining things. You're an act first. You're an act first, ask questions later kind of girl. I don't like asking, it's awkward. Talking with people is difficult for me, but I want to try and make an effort with you. Why? Hiroki. Cosmos pushes her chest even more firmly against my body. I know we're still strangers, but I like you a lot. I want you. Oh! M me? Nani? Yes. I already talked about you. Marina too. They said you smell good. You're not wrong. Oh man, this guy uses Axe body spray, you could tell. The only 28-year-old who uses Axe Body Spray. Cosmos inhales deeply, her nostrils quivering. <laughs> that smile! Aww, that's so cute! You're addictive. Sweet like candy. Marina is picky. Her taste is discerning. If she likes you, you must be special. I like you too. So let's go. The train begins to slow as it pulls into the next station. It's not the station I want to get off at, but Cosmos doesn't seem to care about little details like that. Little details? <laughs> that seems like a big detail. She grabs hold of my hand, her fingers winding with me, when winding with mine. Her hand is very small, and mine dwarfs hers. Your hands are pretty small there too, champ. She's small and pixie-like, but she's incredibly insistent. Hey, Cosmos, wait! I try to pull away from her, but she doesn't listen. Weren't you just complaining about not having a cute girlfriend? The train's automatic doors open with a hiss, and Cosmos drags me forward. Buoyed with numerous passengers, we're all struggling to get off the train. I find my p myself pushed forth. I feel like a fish trying to swim upriver. The current, or in this case Cosmos' tiny hand, is far too strong. I'm being swept away. But what do you want with me? Where are we going? Cosmos glances at me over her shoulder, her ombre hair fluttering. She smiles and says sweetly, On a date.
some date this is. Where are we? <laughs> I like her, her constant peace sign. I have my arms folded, my long legs furled up beneath the table that's a little too small for me. Dragging me out the train was just the first step in Cosmos' diabolical plan. I had barely had a chance to gather my breath when her fingers tightened about my palm once more, her eyes shining with excitement. We're going on a date, Hiroki. You need to hurry. A date? But where? What are you... Ah! And so, just like that, I found myself here. I don't think that cutaway was really necessary. <laughs> Cosmos hauled me all the way to this maid cafe. It's quite a cute cafe with white tables and pink walls. Pots of flowers bloom on almost every available surface and the smell of cinnamon and hot chocolate lingers in the air. Waitresses bustle past, their black flats slipping against, slapping against the wooden floor. They greet customers with cheery cries of, Welcome, master! Welcome, mistress! Their frilly dresses fluttering around their thighs. Some of the waitresses are carrying notepads, ready to jot down orders, while others hold tray, trays laden with slices of apple pie, strawberry sundaes, and fruity milkshakes. Cute J-pop music dances in the air, mixing with the chiming of the bell over the door and the chatter of the patrons. I think I recognize this song, actually. Isn't it one of Ayu's? This cafe isn't a bad place to go on a date, I guess. There are a few couples here. Other than that, Cosmos and I, we were acting all lovey-dovey. Oh, other than Cosmos and I, we are acting all lovey-dovey, feeding one another bites of cake and holding hands over the tabletop. If Cosmos was my girlfriend, I'd feel right at home. But Cosmos isn't my girlfriend. In fact, I hardly know her. Gosh, shut up, Hiroki. <laughs> things are things are progressing way too fast, and I can't wrap my head around all of this. Brita literally just told you why everybody likes you. It's because they're sucked by. So just, just get over yourself, man. When you said you wanted to go on a date, were you being serious? Mm. <laughs> Why are we doing this slow zoom? This is actually funny. What are you seeing me anyway? Are you trying to get one over on Marina? Mm. Are you actually interested in me? Or is this some sort of joke? Yeah. What sort of name is Cosmos anyway? It doesn't sound very Japanese. Mm. And again, you are a succubus. I guess it makes sense that your name isn't Japanese. Why do I and Marina have Japanese names then? Are they their real names? Or did they make them up when they came to Earth? Maybe their succubus moms had relationships with Japanese men, and that's how they ended up like that? How long have you been on Earth anyway? And is there some sort of succubus realm out there where you guys live without humans? Nah. Cosmos remains irritatingly unresponsive. I've asked her dozens of questions, yeah I know. Since our smiling waitress showed us to our seats, she hasn't said much in a single syllable. Is she trying to make me feel uncomfortable? Maybe she's just a sadist like Marina. Hey, Cosmos! I slam my palms against the table, hoping for some kind of response. Why'd you bring me all the way here if you're not gonna talk? What are you doing anyway? She said she's awkward, idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cosmos blinks. She sets her phone down, then looks at me beneath her eyelashes. Sorry, Hiroki, I was doing something important. Didn't look like you were doing anything at all that important to me. For the last five minutes, Cosmos had been busy snapping pictures of her ice cream sundae, okay, which, which a kind waitress already brought over. She must have taken hundreds of pictures of the frozen treat from all sorts of angles, her tongue stuck out of her mouth all the while. Her dedication to the art of photography is kind of impressive. As a photographer myself, I want to commend her for her meticulousness. <laughs> As a photographer? Oh my god, she spent five minutes taking a picture of a Sunday. But another bigger part of me inc feels incredibly exasperated. Thanks to the invention of camera phones, millions of people across the gro globe fancy, th fancy themselves as pro photographers. 
You see people like Cosmos everywhere, taking snapshots of every aspect of their lives so they can upload them to social media. For some reason, people seem particularly fascinated with taking food pics. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because everyone, no matter their age, gender, or personality, has to eat. It's easy to farm. It's easy to farm likes by uploading pics of food, particularly cute food. Like Cosmos is Sunday. Cute food. <laughs> okay, I'll admit her Sunday does look good. I don't think there's anything that special about it. It's about to melt. She spent so long taking pictures of it. Try to be, a, try being a real photographer and see how difficult it is then. Hmm. Got her. This is important. Very. Cosmos returns my grumpy scowl with a small, serious nod. I need to take photos. I'll upload the rest to Rap Rapid Pound. Rapid Pound? That social media site with the questionable name? <laughs> Rapid Pound. <laughs> That's right. Another nod. You might know this. You might not know this, but I'm a little bit famous on Rapid Pound. I need to upload at least five photos a day or I'll, send, or I'll let my fans down. Five photos? Are you kidding me? Define a little bit famous. I have three million followers. Cosmos replies in such a simple matter-of-fact tone. It takes me a few moments to process the full weight of her words. With the penny, f when the penny finally drops, however, I find myself gawping. Three million? Nani? That's right. I've only had a rapid pound account for a few months, but I've become quite well known. Uh, I'll say that's something of an understatement. His? Yes. A lot of famous actors and singers have less followers than that. I don't think that's true. I don't keep abreast of social media trends. I'm too old and irrelevant to worry about online clout. Clout. But I'm not completely clueless. I have been on Rapid Pound before. <laughs> Rapid Pound? Why do they call it that? <laughs> and I have a few ballpark figures to work with. Let me see. Take my own from phone from my pocket, then search through Rapid Pound. Pull up EQA Ayu's profile and scan through it. Ayu's one of the Japan's most popular idols. And she doesn't even have 1 million followers. She only has 700,000. I'm gonna check my freaking uh, Instagram right now. Let's see. Let's look up. Um, someone famous for that. that thing. Okay, I looked up a model. 